My name is Tyler Helms. I am currently the principal trumpet of the Delta Symphony Orchestra as well as a master's student here at Arkansas State University. Today I'll be talking to you about the trumpet. And so this is a this is the B flat trumpet. It's most commonly used in uh, most bands that you'll see in high school or college. Uh, you'll also see them in jazz bands, a lot of movie soundtracks. That is the B flat trumpet. You'll also hear them in, you know, wind ensembles with a big section of trumpets rather than just two or three of us playing something like Hulse First Suite. Here we have a C trumpet, and it is about six inches shorter than the B flat trumpet and most commonly used in an orchestral setting. And you can hear it often in uh, Gustav Mahler's uh, Fifth Symphony. So all the sound comes first from this mouthpiece. We make that sound by putting our top lip ever so slightly over our bottom lip and making a buzzing noise. How can you make so many pitches with only three buttons? Well, on top of having three buttons, we have seven different combinations of buttons that we use. But by adjusting the shape of our mouth as well as our airstream, we can play many different notes using different buttons. Is playing in an orchestra different from playing in a band? Playing in an orchestra is very different from playing in a band. First of all, in an orchestra, I'm the only one playing my part. In a band, I can be surrounded by people playing the same thing as me. And in a band, I've got anywhere from five to nine other people playing next to me. In an orchestra, there's only three of us. So in an orchestra, I have to be a lot more comfortable with my part. As, and in a band, I can often like hang back and let other people you know, play with me instead of having to play over you know, often 50 to 70 other people by myself. So there used to be a time when trumpets didn't even have valves. They just had a long piece of tubing. And that's actually why we have it wrapped up because this is about four and a half feet of metal and nobody wants to hold an instrument that goes way out in front of you like that. So they wrapped it up like this to make it nice and easy to hold. Now those valveless instruments could only play go higher than that, but they didn't have any kind of chromaticism that was easily accessible. So there's another type of trumpet called the bugle. It's really similar to this, uh, but it doesn't have any of these valves that we have here, and it is just the main portion of the trumpet, and it's most commonly used in the military for bugle calls. That one's called taps, and you'll hear that at the funerals of our fallen veterans. And it is an honor for a trumpet player to be called to play taps for these services. This is the most commonly called on excerpt in professional orchestral auditions.
So brass instruments, as stated in the name, are made mostly out of brass. This one in particular is plated in silver. Uh, it just makes it look better, a little more professional, in my opinion. Most that you'll see in bands are silver, some are lacquered, and it's like a duller gold color, and they do often come in gold plating as well. So whenever you get into beginning band, if you do want to play trumpet, you can typically look into student level trumpets that are about three to six hundred dollars. Uh, professional line trumpets like this one will cost anywhere from two to three thousand dollars, but you don't really need to be looking into that until you get really serious about playing the trumpet. So the trumpet is the highest voice of the brass family, and they cover about two octaves in most bands and orchestras, although in jazz bands you'll sometimes see three or more octaves. And now I'll demonstrate my full range on the trumpet. So the way we separate the notes on the trumpet is called tonguing, or articulation, and we use the very tip of our tongue behind our teeth to separate one note from another, and this is showcased really well in Rimsky-Korsakov's Scheherazade. So you've already heard me play very loud on the trumpet, but it also has a softer side, which is showcased in Mahler's Fifth Symphony in a really lyrical solo. Thanks for listening today. I hope that I was able to teach you a little something about the trumpet. We hope to see you in the future whenever Delta Symphony has our next concert. I hope you enjoyed this video about the instruments of the orchestra. If you like this one, please check out our other videos and give us a like and subscribe to our channel.